The reading is from Luke chapter 1, verses 26 to 38. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favoured. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favour with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be, Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin? The angel answered, the Holy Spirit will come on you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age, and she who was said to be unable to conceive is in her sixth month. For no word from God will ever fail. I am the Lord's servant. Mary answered, may your word to me be fulfilled. Then the angel left her. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you, Linda. Let's pray, shall we? Holy Spirit, would you come? Would you make us more aware of your presence right now? Would you speak into our hearts that we may know your son Jesus and live our lives more and more for him? Amen. Well, hang on, this slide, I just thought this slide isn't quite Christmassy enough. There you go. Uh, <laughs> Hang on, it's actually, it's actually still the season of Advent, so for all you Anglicans out there, there you go, Advent wreath, there we go, right. Okay, I wonder, have you ever had a day that has gone completely differently to how you imagined it when, at the start of the day? I know some people might prefer spontaneity and uh, just going with the flow and seeing what happens, but many people like to plan and um, what they'll do um, with their days. Now, I've pre-warned them that I'm going to embarrass them slightly, um, so sorry guys, but my children um, like to plan their weekends almost to the minute sometimes. You know, they'll watch TV between these certain times or, or go on another screen, you know. Um, they'll video, their friend, video call their friends at these exact times. They'll eat their snacks dead on 10 a.m. and 3 p.m. You think I'm joking, they do etc etc but sometimes other agendas come crashing in and take us unexpected directions and to keep embarrassing my children just a moment longer if they've planned their whole Saturdays to the second and then mum and dad come in and say okay children we've decided we're going out for the whole day which we think of course is a very exciting enjoyable thing um, but then they have to come to cope with the change to how they expected their day to turn out. The whole day suddenly takes a different course. Um, one day back when Lauren lived in London and she was going about her daily business, I believe she was in a cafe, she might correct me in a minute if I'm wrong, when a good friend of hers that she'd known for years and years and years in New Zealand walked into the cafe in London to surprise her. She didn't know he was coming um, and he came and surprised her. She wasn't expecting it. Suddenly, her whole day changed at the arrival of this unexpected 
visitor. Now, I wonder, I wonder, friends, what Mary was doing that day when the angel showed up. Um, as a young woman in Roman Judea, I imagine her options were a, a bit more limited than, than ours these days. Maybe she was helping with the tasks that needed doing around the house. Or maybe she was praying, I and mean, she was uh, probably alone at this moment. It doesn't say that anyone else was there. But her daily routine was suddenly interrupted when the angel Gabriel came crashing in with a message just for her. How many of you have had a day, your day interrupted by a messenger from outside of this world? Not, not only that, but one of the very chief ones, the most powerful ones, sent from God's throne to see you. I've never had that. Have any of you? No. It's amazing, isn't it? That's pretty crazy stuff. Not only that, but the message. You're going to have a baby that's God's son, and he'll save the world. Well, that is totally unique, isn't it? A one-off, in all of history kind of event. God coming to earth, coming through Mary. Uh, Mary, I hope you don't mind. <laughs> So her daily routine was interrupted with the most unexpected message. It wasn't just Mary's day that changed, though. It was her entire life. Now, I've got to admit, if an angel appeared in front of me, and maybe if they appeared in front of you too, um, I would be completely freaking out at that moment. Um, I'd have so many questions if I was Mary, you know. Even more, I would have lots of objections. Like, you know, it's, it's just not a good time. You know, I've got a wedding coming up. <laughs> yeah, I would, so that would be me if this happens, if I was Mary. But Mary uh, restrains herself to just one question. How's that possible? And, and the angel is gracious. He, he doesn't tell her off for asking a question or anything like that. He gives her some proof, the proof she needs that God can do what he says he can do. He says, look at your cousin Elizabeth. You know, she's, she's pretty old, um, but she's six months pregnant. See what God can do. Isn't that amazing? So Mary's had this life-changing news from the angel, and she could very, very... Uh, easily and very understandably be completely freaking out at that moment. But you know what? She said yes. She said yes. Let it happen to me as you have said. And there's such a vulnerability about this, isn't there? She lets God not only use her mind, not only her spirit, but even her body. Now, you know, I'm a person who, I'll admit, I like to have control of what's going on, um, and I don't like to give away that control to other people sometimes. I find that difficult. But what Mary does is the ultimate act of trust. Okay, God, I give you control. I'll even let you take control of my body so that I'll have your baby, your son, that is vulnerability. That is trust. So Mary said yes. And you might be thinking, that's all okay for Mary, you know, the mother of the king of kings. And, you know, probably fair to say that she's the greatest woman ever to have lived. But, but what about me? Surely she's a special, special case. God doesn't call anyone to, to do things in that sort of way anymore. Well, okay, so the conception of Jesus, um, his incarnation, that is a one-off event that happened once. Um, it's not going to happen again like that. But in some ways, I want us to think about that this morning, Mary goes ahead of us in doing similar things that God calls us to do. She goes ahead of us in the way of faith. You remember how? 
um, Jesus, um, she comes to be, and she comes to be pregnant, it's by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit comes on her. She encounters the Holy Spirit. She says yes to receiving Jesus inside of her. She nurtures him. She sticks with Jesus through everything. She's even there when he's dying on the cross. She's there at the foot of the cross. She's willing to be associated with him even at that moment of his greatest rejection when the world would hate her for staying with him. She stuck with him. She was there through it all. And she went ahead of us in all these things, in the way we are called to go. You see, God has chosen you too. Not to, not to be the mother of his son, but he has chosen to put his presence in you. He's chosen to put his presence in you. You too are greatly favoured. If God chooses you, it's an honour, it's a sign of his great favour. He's chosen you. You are greatly favoured. He's put his spirit in you if you have said yes to Jesus. And he calls you to nurture your infant faith and feed it until it is mature. So, like Mary, you too are greatly favoured. The Son of God lives in you by his Holy Spirit, if you've said yes to him, if you've let him in. Now, you see, you might ask, why Mary? Why Mary? Why, why does she get this privilege that no one else in all of history could get? And well, all we know about her from the Bible is that she was... Um, greatly favoured by God. She had found favour with God. You see, she had lived a life up to that point that had said yes to God. She kept her heart pure. She was a holy vessel. But also, it's much simpler than that as well. God chose her, and he chose her because he knew that she would say yes. So there's two parts to it. God's choice and her cooperation. And so it is with us. The Holy Spirit can only really, truly flourish in a pure house. And that's because he's exactly that. He's the Holy Spirit. Psalm 24, verses 3 to 4. Who can ascend the hill of the Lord? Those with clean hands and a pure heart. But it might not have felt sometimes like what God had done for Mary was a sign of his favour. Certainly when she stood at the cross and her heart was breaking at the death of Jesus, it may not have felt like God's favour. But through that all, she clung on to those words that had been spoken. The Bible says that she treasured them in her heart. She treasured the word of God in her heart. She believed it. She held on to it. She knew that what God had told her was true. And we're going to get onto this in a minute. It says so, so wonderfully, no word of God will ever fail. I've got this picture up on the screen. And it's, it's a well-known picture. It, it, it's in uh, St. Paul's Cathedral. It's by a man called William Holman Hunt. And it's called Light of the World. The picture is of Jesus. And he's carrying a lantern that is shining light. There's light... Uh, uh, around his head as well. He's knocking on the door, knocking on the door. Why? Because he wants to come in. But if you look really carefully, you'll see that actually there's no handle on this door. He's not able to open it from the outside. He is knocking and waiting to come in. That is Jesus with us. He is knocking at the door, waiting to come in waiting to flood in at that opportunity when we say yes to him. We have to open the door to him. And I wonder, what words have been spoken over your life? What things have other Christians said about you, said that are words from God that are going to happen in your life? 
Or maybe they've come even and you've uh, sensed these words in your heart while you've been praying. And so many of these words that we have spoken over our lives don't happen because we don't open the door to them. We, we expect the fulfillment of these words to fall from the sky. But Jesus is at the door. Jesus is knocking. He's waiting to flood in at that opportunity. So, for example, if God says, you're going to be an evangelist, you're going to tell lots of people about Jesus, they're going to come to know him because of the words that you speak to him. If God says that to you, but then you never make any effort to meet anyone who isn't a Christian already, or you know them, but you never actually open your mouth to try and tell them about Jesus, then this word of your life is probably never going to happen until, until you learn to say yes, even when you're scared. And that's okay. It's okay to be scared. But it's learning to say yes, even though you're scared. And then he floods in through that door you've opened to him and does his work in you and through you. Remember this. Every word that comes from God will come true as long as your yes to him remains and it's not a yes but only if then it will come to pass every word of, that comes from God will come true no word of God will ever fail and I've put a picture on this slide of two wedding rings that is a symbol of how we are in this covenant relationship with God. It's like we're in a marriage relationship with him. He says, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. I'll be with you always. And when we've accepted him, it's like we're married to him forever. We're in a relationship of promise with each other. And he can never go back on his word. Why? Because he is God. Because he is God and he cannot lie. So that is a symbol of how, because we're held in this relationship with him, when we say yes to him, he will never, ever leave us or forsake us or give up on us. What about you today? Have you said yes to him? So we've been thinking about how God showed up in Mary's life. It was unexpected. It was good news to her. It was words of great favour and how we too are greatly favoured. Now, I wonder, have you ever met with God in this way? Have you felt him stirring in your heart by his Holy Spirit? God says, will you open the door to me today? That is what Jesus is saying to you. And he's also saying this, carry me, carry me. Not as a literal baby like Mary, but we are carriers, if we've said yes to Jesus, of his spirit. We take him with us wherever we go. We carry him. He's made his promise to you. You are his, so give yourself fully to him. No holds barred. Will you serve him until your bones ache with the effort, putting your body on the line for him? Will you talk about him to your friends, your colleagues, even strangers in the supermarket queue, even if it means people might laugh at you for it? When he has your yes, things will never be the same again. And do you know why? It's because we say, God, I belong to you, body, soul, spirit. And not only that, my schedule belongs to you. Come and take over, God. Come and take over and use me to do your purposes, to do your will today. Let's pray, shall we? Lord Jesus Christ, We are sorry for the times when we have said no to you or when we have said yes, but only if you meet our conditions. We know that you want to come in with your light, with your love, with your favour. So Lord, we open the door to you today. We say yes 
we are in. We are yours, body, soul, and spirit. Why? Because you gave your everything for us. You became human. You became a tiny baby. You were vulnerable to be nurtured and raised by Mary. And when you grew up, you gave your life for us on the cross. You gave your everything for us. So Lord, what can we do but give our life to you? And today we want to tell you that we believe and trust in your promises. That you will come to fulfill everything that you've said you will do in us and for us and through us. That you'll never leave us or forsake us. That we can do greater things than even your son did because we believe in your name. And we thank you for the presence of your Holy Spirit. So would you lead and guide us today? We are yours. We say yes to you. Would you fulfill your purposes for us and for your world through us today? Amen.